What's up, students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, I got a question that comes from the College Board website, the My AP Classroom, and it's from Unit 6, and it's number one in the progress check question. Now, the reason I want to go through this is because I believe that the College Board did not give us the correct answer, and my students are going nuts about it, so I just want to get this solution out there and show you what I think it is, and also show you a much easier way to do it than they show you. So there's a lot of words that go along with this particular question, but I'm not going to go through everything because I'll just show you and tell you what's kind of important. And these are the multiple choice questions that they had, uh, the multiple choice answers that they gave you. And what they're looking for is the magnitude and change of potential energy from the block spring system. I'm underlining things that are very, very important to me from the lowest vertical position up to the highest vertical position. Now, some of the things worth noting right away is that everything in this diagram is not drawn to scale. So the words that they gave you, this is the natural length. So L1 represented when they put the mass on it, so this was equilibrium. And we know at equilibrium that Fs is going to be equal to Fg. So now we have a relationship of Kx equals Mg. And if you don't know how I got this, I've done a couple of videos talking about oscillating springs. I'll put that in the description, maybe down in the comments below. You can go check that out and see exactly how that relationship goes. And then this last one right here was when they pull the mass downward and then they're going to release it and it's going to oscillate. So L2 is really has a couple different names. It's really the amplitude at which this thing is going to oscillate. So one thing they don't really make clear in here is that it's going to oscillate in a range that does not come up to the natural length of the spring. So the range of oscillation is really gonna be something like this. So here's the simplest way to really solve this. We know that the energy change is equal to the energy final minus the energy initial. And all they want is the block spring system. So all I care about is the change in the potential energy of the spring. So if I set up what the finals and initials are, I'll see this. At the final position, so this is at the top, that is going to be equal to 1 half k x squared, right? That's the potential energy of a spring. So we can simplify that now to say 1 half. They said that the spring constant was given as k naught. Now, the x, what is the stretch from here? Well, I said it's going to oscillate in this range. So essentially, this is going to be 2a if I go all the way up to the top. So how far is it stretched from here? This is what we need to know. What is this x right here from the top of the oscillation to the natural length of the spring? That's going to be given by L1 minus L2. Now, if I look at the initial energy, I'm going to do the same exact thing. It's going to be 1 half kx squared. That's going to be equal to 1 half k naught, like I said they gave you. Now, what's the stretch at the bottom? Well, that's going to be L1 plus L2. So now all I have to do is take the final minus the initial. It's going to get a little bit sloppy, but we'll stay nice and organized. So this actually represents this. And this would be a right answer if there's no multiple choice, but that's not one of the answers here. So we're going to have to do some math. We're going to have to start canceling some terms and simplifying things. And then hopefully we'll get close to one of these. The first thing I'm going to do is take care of this inside the parentheses. And we're just going to say that now I have 1 half k naught L1 squared minus 2 L1 L2 plus L2 squared minus 1 half K naught L1 squared plus 2 L1 L2 plus L2 squared. Now I don't see some things that I can cancel out yet so what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute in this K naught just to make my life a little bit easier. Now finally we can start to cancel some things out. This term here is going to cancel out this term. This term here is going to cancel out this term. And we are going to be left with a minus 2 k naught L1 L2. That's going to be the change in energy. And energy is a scalar. So we could take the absolute value. So this answer here should be the answer. And in College Board, they say this is the answer. And what happened was, if I looked at their key, they factored wrong here. They just put minus L1, L2 here instead of minus 2, and they did the same thing here, which is why I was off by a factor of 2. And you could tell from my upcoming solution here, I'm not that strong in math. But math is definitely not my favorite thing. I solved it completely different, but completely right. So here's what I did. I said if I consider this whole system, right, I'm going to make everything conserved. I'm going to make an expression for the whole system. 
So delta energy is going to be equal to the initial minus the final. So we're going to have our same exact final. So we need the U.S. final, but now it also has some gravitational potential energy as well. So it'd be U.G. final. So that would be the total energy at the end, the total final energy. That would need to be minus from the total initial energy. And initially, all it has is U.S. initial. Now, if this whole system was conserved and this was block earth spring, we could say that that's equal to zero. Because in a closed system, the change in energy is zero because energy is conserved. But in our example, it's not. They don't want anything to do with gravity. They just want to look at the change in the spring. But these are going to be the only energies. So I can pull this out and just say this. Now look at here, U.S. final minus U.S. initial, that's all of this mess right here, and it's just equal to this. So if I know that U.G. final, I also know the change here. So that's just M.G. delta Y. So I already have an expression I know for M.G., so maybe this takes a little bit more physics because you need to remember this relationship, but this is just K naught X. Now what's X? X is just L1. And what's delta y? Well, it's going to be 2 times the amplitude, or 2 times L2. We get this exact same answer. You might be like, hey, Brad, where did the negative go? The negative is still here. If I brought this over, it would be the same exact thing here. But look, I got the same exact answer in a lot less area and a lot less math. This is the way I like it. Guys, if you have any other questions, if you come across a question that you just don't understand or you think there's not a right answer, just email me. Let me know. I'll sit down like this. It's not a big... This is not a big time thing for me and I love to help. So just keep email me, let me know, do something, and I'll make sure I try and get the video up in about 24 hours or so. So I'll see you in the next one, guys. Enjoy the rest of your physics journey, and I'll see you in the next one.